If you haven't taken a, a heat transfer class that went through finite difference approximations, you can go to this is Fundamentals of Heat and Mass Transfer by DeWitt. And uh, it has these. I didn't write the page number. But basically, it gives you the orientation of the node. I'll draw some more. This is good fun. So you can think about this is the node you're talking about here. And then it is influenced by the four nodes around it, assuming you have a square grid, which most people do, at least in the beginning. If you want to talk about it, if you have some kind of corner configuration, we have a notch taken out. You use this, this set of equations here. Obviously, domain looks like you would have a, I don't know why I do that. But, uh, if you have this area gone, then this node would be influenced by the air here, and then these four nodes around it. And a wall is influenced by the air here. This node is influenced by the air and these three nodes. And they have several more configurations that you can use. And they just give you the finite difference approximations here. You can solve for the variables you want to use and program those in as you see fit. I think I talked about that a little early. I was supposed to go to Runja Cutter next. I'll talk about a Runja Cutter script real quick. I never did Runja Cutter in Excel because I didn't want to. I don't use Excel if I don't have to. Anybody else program their Runja Cutter in MATLAB for 520? Nobody? That is sad in here because I love MATLAB. Yeah, see my shirt. So if I run this, I don't know why this button isn't available. But if I hit F5, hopefully it'll run. So this would be the temperature of whatever I was trying to look at. You can see it automatically plots. It makes everything. Uh, it was some, some problem in Drysdale I think I took out. It looks like I did 2.8, but I don't think that's actually it. I think I wrote it for 2.8 and used it for other things. So you can set the, this is an example of the inline function I was talking about. So you make the inline function here. This is the equation. Naturally, we have some, con some convection. Some tau would be, what is tau? I don't remember. It'll tell me down here. Thickness, tau's the thickness, right. That's why I have these in here, because I always forget what variables are named. So I always write the units and the, what the variables stand for. So I was working at NIST, working with a guy who didn't, uh, he either wrote the wrong units or didn't write the units on the variables he was using as the equations were wrong, and it took me a really long time to figure out why, like a day. I don't know if you've worked on a MATLAB program for eight hours, but it's lame. All right, so the Runja Cutter algorithm, we've all seen that before. Kevin, I thought you had a question, but you were just scratching your hair. Sure you don't have a question? Not yet. All right. Keep them in mind. All right, so we evaluate this function at every k, k value, right? Like the, the algorithm states that you do. So every time we need that equation, you have to do it here. So when you did it in Excel, did you have to change every column when you wanted to change something? Is that what happened? I assume you did. Yes. So in Excel, you have to change every column when you have an equation. Yeah. Yeah. So this way, you only have to change this equation once, because I would forget which columns I had changed and mess up a lot. And so if you have coupled equations, you just have three inline functions, and you only have to change three lines or four, or however many coupled equations you have. And it, I think it saves a lot of time. Basically, every, every line here would be a column in Excel, unless you wanted to put these lines could go into, into the equation itself. You could put this instead of putting TK2. You could put line 89 instead of putting TK2 in 
in this solution, but I find it much more straightforward to set a variable for each change and change for each step. Um, so you adjust the temperature by half the time step, or the time by half the time step, adjust the temperature by half of half of the time step times k1 for k2, and you go through. And at the end, you just set change in temperature equal to 1 6 times all of this, and adjust the temperature accordingly, iterate the time step, and iterate the counter. Um, you can use the counter as the, the time step if you want. You just have to multiply it by delta t before you plot it, or use it for something else. Plot the figure. Notice I didn't have to adjust the temperature, the time, and the temperature length of the arrays because they're both plotted as the same thing. Or they're both calculated in the same way. There's not any extra iterations for one or the other. And this is how you, you take the transpose of a matrix. You put a, a single quote after the matrix. I did this because MATLAB originally calculates them as row vectors. And I wanted them as column vectors so I could compare them to Dempsey's Excel examples. Uh, that's the only reason that's done. Any questions about this? I have notes. I think I've covered everything. Oh, I write the time to the command window. Yeah, this, I left this column, the semicolon off this line so I could see the time when whatever temperature I was looking for is reached. You know, if I run it, we're trying to see when it gets to uh, either how hot it gets in six seconds or when it gets to this this temperature. It looks like when it gets to this temperature, it stops. So it takes about six seconds, and it'll write that to the command window. The time equals 6.08. So you, that would be the answer I was looking for at the time. Um, this. The new versions highlight the equal sign when you leave off the semicolon. So if you're coding and you notice that the equal sign's highlighted, that's why. I'm not sure why. Does anybody know why these are underscored in red now? It started doing that, and I don't know why the new versions do that exactly. So maybe they'll. Oh, maybe that's an indication that there's a met being uh, growing. This, it's talking about pre-allocating for speed, where you would, I don't do it on a lot of small codes like I should. You basically set, set a variable equal to the size that it's going to be at the end of the program full of zero. So you'd make, what it's wanting me to do is, is to set t of k2 equal to uh, like an array of 300 zeros or something. Because the way MATLAB writes the variables, if it if it has a variable array already already defined, then it will fill in, it'll replace the zeros with numbers as it goes along and walks through the, the time step. When you rewrite, if you just add a number to it, it's not like Fortran where it'll crash if you don't already assign. It'll add, it'll go ahead and add numbers to it, but it has to rewrite the array every every step. So it takes a lot more. Um, computation time or RAM space. And it also causes a problem if you run out of RAM, then it, it, if there's not enough room to allocate the large matrix E, then you'll get an error in the middle of your program. So it's good to do. I don't know that I did it in any of the examples. I don't think I did. So that's my fault.